My lecture about challenges in hip artroplasty will be a little bit of a warm-up for that what, what follows. Um, the challenges have been changing over time. Former generations had to cope with different problems, and I think change, uh, th things changed a little bit. While our predecessors uh, had to cope with, uh, in, to find it, uh, the right materials for total hip arthroplasty, to find solutions for implant fixation, cementless as well as biologic, uh, uh, bi biologic cementless fixation as well as, as cementing techniques. Uh, they had to solve the big problem of wear. I think most of these problems are solved today. Our new challenge is that patients know that total hip arthroplasty works, and patients want perfection to um, continue all their sporting activities, to continue a normal life. So what are the challenges today? Faster rehabilitation, uh, for those who um, introduced that, we have a lot of rapid recovery or fast-track fast protocols. This is more a problem of organization. Um, this is a matter of anesthesiology, matter of physical therapy, and uh, combining all groups working in a hospital. Challenge today still is longevity, especially in younger patients. If you see uh, the graph on the right side, we see that especially younger, patient, younger patients, younger than 55 years, have uh, inferior, uh, in, in, in inferior follow-up uh, for total hip arthroplasty. Uh, we have to solve the problem of loosening. Uh, we have to improve the bony remodeling and we have to avoid stress shielding. Um, some words uh, to bony remodeling. There are enough data now that certain short stems uh, guarantee for a more physiologic bony remodeling uh, and therefore to avoid stress shielding. Uh, but in a systematic review, uh, it was concluded that no, not all short stems function uh, equal, but some short stems are, um, show a much better bony remodeling, arguing for a favorable load transfer. And I think the main challenge today is function. We have increasing demands from our patients. We have increasing expectations ourselves. And when we define function, we have to divide from our usual scores, like the Harris Hip score, and other methods to define patient satisfaction. Uh, in Swedish hip arthroplasty register, uh, we found data about the quality of life with the EQ5D health score, and uh, in Sweden, the national mean value is only 88.7 satisfied patients. So more than 11% are not satisfied with their total hip. And as an example for the discrepancy between usual scores and function, uh, I would like to present you this paper from, from Linz. Uh, Josef Hochreiter made a follow-up for 10-year results of a conventional straight stem. He found excellent values for Harry's hip score, but he found nearly 13% of positive Trendelenburg sign. And that's the first thing, the muscle function. Today, there is enough evidence that muscle function is uh, diminished is, uh, by the implant as well by the surgical approach by lesion of the transgluteal by, by, by lesion of the greater trochanter and damage of the uh, musculus gluteus medius 
The next thing is the reconstruction of the center of rotation. Uh, we know that we have, we have to try to restore length and we have to restore, much more important, the offset, as well as the acetabular offset, uh, as the femoral offset. Can be a problem in special types uh, with a narrow uh, door A-type femur and with uh, Coxavara patients. Uh, these are the data from our straight stem generation it was 2000, these are examples from 2002 and 2004. And it was concluded that femoral offset is only restored in 40% of patients. Or Jeroz concluded um, his offset was in 46% even smaller. But does this matter? Yes, it does. We have a lot of publication indicating that we have problems with function when we cannot restore the offset. Patients with a decreased offset show lower physical function defined by Warmack function score. Patients with decreased offset show inferior abductor function. They even show pathologic gait changes and in certain circumstances they even show a higher polyethylene wear. So, the changes have been changing. Uh, the challenges have been changing over time, not only in the surgeon's pers pers perspective, but uh, also in the patient's perspective. And I would like to uh, take a look into the registers regarding revisions. If you see that uh, New Zealand, Sweden, Norway, that's only a small selection of possible register data. Uh, the challenges or the reasons of revision have been changing over time. If you see on the, uh, on the right upper part, loosening, if we continue this linear function, maybe the problem of loosening on osteolysis will be solved in 10 or 20 years. These patients that were revised today had their index operation some 10, 12, 15 years ago. And uh, if you continue this linear function, maybe loosening is not a problem still today. And it's not only the rev revision numbers that count. Um, the patient's satisfaction and function normally is not addressed in registered data because the uh, subjective functional complaints only rarely lead to revision. So the challenges today, of course, is avoid revision. We have to improve longevity by favorable load transfer and by avoiding stress shielding. But I think much more uh, challenge is to improve function by better reconstruction of the center of rotation, improving the offset, and avoiding leg length, leg, leg length discrepancies. We have to retain full muscular function as well as by selection of the right implant as a selection of, the, of a proper surgical approach. Therefore, we want to improve subjecti sub subjective satisfaction with total hip arthroplasty to obtain the ideal of the forgotten joint. Thank you.